You're tricking yourself into thinking that you're stuck in a rut. You don't need to be inspired or motivated to go take a Today, we're gonna talk about the action steps that you need to take to quickly get out of a rut. And I'm gonna give you seven ways, seven action steps that you can use to get out of a rut. And to start off today, I wanna to give you a phrase that I say all of the time to kind of help you understand what a rut is and how to get out of it. And that phrase is this, inaction causes more inaction. Action causes more action. What do I mean by that? If you're in a rut, you're never in a rut when you're moving. Like if you ever feel like you're stuck in a rut, it's never when you're moving. It's always when you're stagnant. And I always use the phrase stagnant on purpose because I think very visually. And I, when I think the word stagnant, I think of like a pond that's been stagnant for a long time. It's got like a gross film over top of it. There's flies and it's just becoming disgusting because I never want to think of my life as stagnant as that pond is. And I get it. If I'm saying you have to take action in order to get out of a rut, you're like, well, what the hell? Like I, I, I'm trying to learn how to take action, right? That's the, the reason why I'm in the rut is because I can't force myself to take action. I get it. So I'm going to give you my seven tips to actually get out of a rut. And I get it. Like you take action all day long though. So you might be sitting there and you're like, yeah, but Rob, like I, I, I'm not, I want to take action, but I'm not taking action that I want to, right? So I'm just, I'm not taking action. So how am I supposed to take action when I'm not taking action? You have to realize you're taking action all day long, right? If you're in a rut, you're not just sitting on the couch and then peeing on yourself, right? Getting up off of the couch, walking to the bathroom and peeing is action. When you're hungry, you get up off of the couch and you go and get some food. Both of those things are taking action. The only difference is it's not the action that you want to take for the life that you want, right? You don't need to be inspired or motivated to go take a sh You're going to do it if you have to, right? You don't have to do it to go pee. You don't have to do it to, if you're hungry. And I'm telling you this because I want you to actually really see this and feel this in your mind. You're tricking yourself into thinking that you're stuck in a rut, right? If a lion walked into your house right now, you wouldn't have to search for motivation to run from it. You wouldn't, right? You would just get moving. You'd run, you'd take off, right? And so you have to realize you're tricking yourself into thinking that you're in a rut in the first place. And I'm gonna give you obviously steps to get out of it. But what it's really about more than anything else is, is starting small, more than anything else. A lot of times, you're not taking action because you're thinking about all of the things that need to be done versus what's the next thing that needs to be done. You're thinking about all of the things, right? If you, if you want to go to the gym and you're not motivated, you're stuck in a rut physically and your body's not where you want it to be and you know you need to go to the gym, it's not because of the fact that you have to go to the gym and do a curl. It's because of the fact that you have to, you're thinking not of that one curl, you're thinking of every single exercise, every single thing that you need to do. Getting into the car, well, first off, getting dressed, getting yourself ready, making sure that you have water, putting on your shoes, getting into the car, going to the gym, lifting the weights, doing every single set that you, and you start thinking about all of them versus what's the next thing they need to do, right? You're not thinking about one curl, you're thinking about all of the curls, all of the sets that you need to do, all of the reps that you need to do. And sometimes you have to take it back to just the simplest form, right? There's two things you need to focus on. Number one is your mind. And number two is your body, right? In order to get out of a rut, you need to trick or get two things moving. You need to get your mind moving and you need to get your body moving, right? So when I say get your mind moving, find something, put on something that makes you feel better whether it's a certain song that you love that you want to dance to, whether it's this podcast, whether it's someone else's podcast, maybe it's another motivational speaker, somebody that makes you feel like, you know what, I can do this. Maybe it's David Goggins. You need someone to yell at you and scream at you and cuss at you. Or maybe you need someone inspirational or motivational or someone spiritual. I don't know what it is, but you need to trick your mind in a way to get your mind actually moving. So that's the first thing you got to think about. What can you do to get your mind moving? Second thing you got to think about is your body. You just have to physically move your body. Once again, I said, if you have to go to the bathroom, you're going to get up and go to the bathroom stuck in a rut. You're not going to pee on yourself, right? If you're hungry, you're not going to starve yourself. You're going to get up and you're going to take small action. Now, I realize that 
going to the bathroom and getting food are not going to create this incredible life that you want to create. But sometimes you just got to take the action that you need to, even when you feel like shit and your body will catch up to you, right? So motivation can come from the mind. Motivation can come from the body. So that comes to the very first thing. So out of the seven tips I'm going to give you, number one is to move your body. Whatever it is you need to do. Do not negotiate with your mind. If you feel like you're stuck in a rut, nobody's stuck in a rut moving. Like I said, you're always stuck in a rut and you don't feel right and you don't feel motivated when you're sitting on the couch and you're looking at Instagram. Hey, delete Instagram already. Get rid of it if you have to. If it's getting in the way of holding you and holding you back from the dreams that you want, get rid of it, right? Move your body. If you're not moving your body, you find it hard to move your body, I need you to get enough motivation to get up and get some form of caffeine in you if you need to. Something that's going to get you moving. If you want something that's that's not caffeine, you can do B12, right? Take vitamins, whatever it is that you have to do to get your body moving. What happens is, once again, inaction creates more inaction. Action creates more action. So if you go, you know what? I don't feel 100%. I don't feel ready to do this. All you have to do, force your body to move. Get up, do some jumping jacks, put on some music, whatever it is that you have to do, right? Take small steps, which is number two. So number one is get your body moving. Number two is to take small steps. Once again, as I said earlier, if you're not taking action towards the life that you want, towards the things that you need to do, it's because you're thinking about doing all of the things that you need to do, even though there's no possible way that you can do all of them at one time, right? Just think about, okay, I need to get in shape. All I need to do is go to the gym and just do one curl. That's it. I don't need to do anything else. I just need to do one curl. And when you get to the gym and you do one curl and just make that the only thing you need to do, don't even, you don't have to do anything else. If you go into the gym and you do one curl and walk out, that's a win because you've at least gone in the right direction of what it is that you want. But I guarantee you, when you get to the gym and you do one curl, you have a weight in your hand. You're like, you know what? I might as well just do a couple more and you do a couple more. And then what happens is your body starts to create endorphins. Your body starts to create all of the feel good chemicals that I'll talk about, right? What you do is your body will trick itself into going, you know what? This actually feels good. Maybe I should keep doing this. And then you do it again and you do it again. And then you realize 45 minutes later, you're not focusing on the whole 45 minutes. Realize that you're focusing on just the next curl, just the next squat, just the next foot in front of the other in your walk on the treadmill, whatever it is you need to do. Take the small steps. Don't worry about everything. Just worry about what the next thing is in front of you. So that's number two to get out of a rut is to take the small steps. Number three, this is something that not enough people talk about. Celebrate your small wins. If you got up, you put on some clothes and you got in the car and you got to the gym and you walked inside of the gym, that's a win, right? You've got to give yourself celebrations for all of these little teeny tiny micro wins, right? Dance after you get that first set done. You know, if you're, I have a gym in my garage, right? If, if I don't feel like it, I'm gonna put on the music, I'm gonna drink some caffeine, and I'm gonna make myself feel really good. I'm gonna dance around in my garage and get my body moving, and I'm going to celebrate the small wins. This is the reason why this is important. Number one, it gets the body moving. You get on the good music, and the good music always makes you feel better. But your brain will release serotonin and dopamine, and serotonin and dopamine make you feel good. And when you feel good, your body and brain want more of those feel-good chemicals. How do you get the feel-good chemicals? By celebration. That's when they're released. So if you, if, you know, if, if I'm like, I don't feel like I want to work out, I'm like, oh God, I gotta, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm like, I just gotta force myself to get up and do it. I force myself, I get my clothes on, I walk into my garage and I'm like, I'm just gonna lift one thing, right? I lift one thing, that's all that it is. I'm like, all right. I did what I needed to do. Let me put on some music. Let me celebrate this success. And when I celebrate and I move around and I dance and I start to force myself to feel good, which is something that is 100% possible for every single person right now is to force yourself to feel good by having little celebrations. I go, whew, I actually feel really good. You know what? I actually could do another set. And I do another set and I move around and make myself feel good. I put on some of my favorite songs. I put on my feel good music. I put on my, my happy playlist. And I do the next set and I do the next set. I celebrate every single one of them. And what happens is it start, I start to get momentum on my side, right? Which is, and I think I'm gonna talk about in just a minute, but I'm not there yet. Number four is to turn off your phone. Yes, turn off 
your damn phone. Your phone is killing you from the dreams that you, like killing all of the dreams that you want in your life because it's taking you away. Getting on Facebook, getting on Instagram, like all of those things are great. I think that they're great if they're used correctly, but I think they're misused by most people. So turn off your phone. Then what do you need to do? Turn off all of your electronics, right? If you just turn off your phone and you turn off your electronics and you go, you know what? I'm just going to sit here. You're going to get bored and you're going to go, I have to have something to do. Why? Because humans at this point in time, we're so addicted to doing things. It's really hard to just sit on your couch and stare at the ceiling. Trust me, I've tried it, right? I do it sometimes. I force myself to literally stare at the, at the ceiling. I'm like, I'm not going to look at my phone. I'm not going to look at electronics. I'm not going to do something right now. I'm going to literally just sit and be. But for most people, you get to that point. You're like, I got to find something to do. I've got to do something. And you get bored because your phone is off. Your TV is off. None of this. You can't turn your computer on. You can't go onto YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. None of those things. You'll get bored and you'll go, I got to do something. Guess what? That's what you want. You want to be able to do something. So literally, you've forced yourself into a mini boredom, which is then going to make you then take action the way that you want to. So then what do you do? Okay, I'm in this mini boredom. I feel like I want to do something. Number five is focus on just the next 60 seconds. I don't care about the next five minutes. I don't care about tomorrow. I don't care about the next hour. I don't care about later on today. I don't care this, about this afternoon, this evening, any of those things. The next 60 seconds. If I'm on the couch and I'm bored because my, my, I, have, I got no Instagram, I got no Facebook, I got no TikTok, I got none of those things that come and save me. I can't turn on Netflix because my TV's off. I can't go onto YouTube because my computer's off. I take all of those things away. I go, okay, I want to do something. Like I feel like I should do something. What do you do? Okay, in the next 60 seconds, what can I do to get me closer to this goal that I want that's going to get me out of a rut? Of you know, the body that I want, for instance, if we keep going down that route, what can I do in the next 60 seconds? I can do 20 pushups. All right, let's just do 20 pushups. And that alone, the next 60 seconds, that's going to take me into the direction that I want to move with my life. That's the key. What can I do in the next 60 seconds that's going to move me into the direction of where I want to go with my life? And you can ask yourself this question, is what I'm doing right now getting me closer to or further from my goals? Is what I'm doing right now getting me closer to or further from my goals, okay? So then, over those next 60 seconds, boom, 20 push-ups. Maybe I put on some feel-good music. Maybe I celebrate a little bit. Maybe I get all excited. I get that happy feeling. I get those dopamine, the serotonin, all of those things. I start to feel a little bit better. All right, cool. I'm start, I don't feel like amazing, but I'm starting to feel a little bit better. You know what I'm talking about. You've done this before, right? You start to feel, all right, maybe I could do another set of 20 push-ups, whatever it is. All right, that brings us to number six, which is ride the momentum. Now I'm starting to feel just a little bit, maybe not a whole lot better, but just a little bit better. I'm gonna celebrate. I'm gonna get that serotonin. I'm gonna get that dopamine. I'm gonna get the music playing. I'm gonna get the dancing going. I'm gonna get the celebrating going. Now that it's rolling, I wanna keep it rolling. And this is the important part, is to make sure that when you start to feel the momentum, you don't let the momentum stop. And you ride the momentum until you're done. Right? I always say that if you're at the very top of a really big hill and you take a 15 pound bowling ball and I decide that I'm going to let the bowling ball go and I let it go and then I immediately stop it, it's very easy to stop if I immediately stop it or a half a second later I stop it. Why? Because the, the bowling ball hasn't got any momentum on its side. It hasn't got any momentum going to where it's trying to go, to where it needs to go. But if I'm at the top of a 400, pound, or 400 foot hill, and I'm like, all right, now I'm going to try to stop it at the bottom of the hill. That 15 pound bowling ball weighs a whole hell of a lot more. It feels like it weighs a whole hell of a lot more because it's got so much more momentum. You're not going to reach out your hands and try to stop a bowling ball at the bottom of a hill. It's going to break some fingers. It's going to break your hand. Something's going to happen. And so when you start to feel the momentum, ride the momentum because it's very easy to stop the momentum at the top of the hill. You want to at least start to get down a little bit, a little bit down the hill, a little bit down the hill, so it starts moving a little bit quicker. So once I start getting the next 60 seconds, then I go, okay, what's the next 60 seconds? I can, I start to feel a little bit better. What's the next 60 seconds feel like? And I'm pushing myself just a little bit more, right? And then if I want to, to add on top of that, one of the best ways to do that is tip number seven, is to get around other people, right? Now, when I say get around other people, I mean get around the right people, right? You got to make sure you're getting around people who are actually going to be holding yourself to a higher standard. 
Uh, earlier in the week on Wednesday, I work out with a group of men. There's like 15, 20 of us that work out every single Wednesday. It's just the way that we've been doing it now for the past three months, right? Uh, this Wednesday, my alarm went off. I did not want to wake up this Wednesday. Didn't feel like it. It was really freaking cold outside. We work out outside and I was like, no way. I don't want to do it. And I felt that little voice inside of my head say, Rob, just stay asleep. And I was like, no. I hate you, little voice. This is a little voice that's trying to keep me from all of my dreams. I like to call it the inner bitch. And I, when I hear the little inner bitch and I can identify it, I've got to do the exact opposite of what it says. And I was like, oh, all right, I got to get up. I go and I didn't want to work out, but I knew that if I was around 15 to 20 other guys that were working out, it would start to make me feel better. It would start to give me motivation to be around those people that are also doing something amazing with their life. So I forced myself. I was like, I'm not going to negotiate with you. I got some coffee, got out the door, immediately went there. And we worked out for an hour and 21 minutes, according to my heart rate monitor. And I burned almost 1100 calories, over a thousand calories in a workout. I would not, I promise you this. I would not have burned a thousand calories. I don't know if I've ever burned a thousand calories in a workout by myself but I burned a thousand, over a thousand calories in that hour and 21 minutes. I definitely wouldn't have gone for an hour and 21 minutes either. But the thing is, when you're around other people with the same mission that have momentum going on their side, there's something that happens cohesively when everybody else is working towards the same mission. So are there other people that are working towards getting better in their mind, that are working towards getting better in their business, that are working towards getting better in their relationship, they're working towards getting better in their finances that are working towards getting better in their bodies, whatever it is that you can get yourself. And even if you don't feel like it, you can place yourself around them and being around them motivates you to be better. That's what you've got to think about. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. And so if you're telling yourself, oh yeah, but I'm just a perfectionist, you're full of shit. You are. Failing at something is better than doing nothing.